Kudos, bravo, writers, and welcome listeners to Bramble On as we discuss the season finale of Love Among the Brambles Season 1769, the episode 15925, Not All Are Having a Ball. However, we, the viewers, were. So much to say, so much to go over. Where to start? I'm just going to run through the list to leave more time for callers. Uh, we at last have the Gran Amas Ball, celebrated in honor of the harvest, the mez. And we were there in all its glory. We start with Viola going to the ball on her own. She's her own woman. She needs no one. However, she goes looking for stock. She's realized, going back to that Holly Loom episode, the first tier, the episode entitled Like Rain, she realizes how much stock means to her. She realizes how badly she's treated him. She wants to make amends, but she cannot find him. He's there. He becomes despondent, disenchanted, and goes to leave. They just miss each other. Darling Calla Lily goes to the ball with Carter, cousin to Prince Raffia. Will this bring the two families together, or will it tear the entire ring apart? Meanwhile, Slate enters with two glamorous women on either arm. Dahlia on one side, Lena on the other, every man's dream. And yet, is it Slate's? It certainly would have been in seasons gone by. In a sweet turn of events, Estranged friends, Citron and Magnolia, go to the ball together. This would be the first time in Love Among the Brambles that Citron has not gone to an important event on the arm of a man, a boyfriend. Things have changed for Citron. One is with Magnolia that Jeffrey is not one to let go just for the sake of it. Darling Nanny Nettlebottom and her husband, Milliam, show up. Nanny looking matriarchal with the family jewels, and Milliam having worn a clean shirt, and his pipe with him, of course, his hair having been washed and combed. A Magnolia's attitude when she finds that Jeffrey has shown up. One wonders if she may have even been in cahoots with Jeffrey and enabled him to break into the dance. That would say a lot about how far Magnolia's come, but it's just conjecture. Stark and Brooke both leave the ball, determined to move out of the ring, find greener pastures, a greener weald. Brooke, disillusioned over his lack of prospects, his lack of friendship with Slate, who is being run roughshod, by Dali and Lena, and Stock, who is no longer associated with Rosie Kitty Diddleleaf after the, the incident with the spiders. Stock, too, is disillusioned. He tried getting into ring politics. He did not care for it at all. Tried to be a civil servant. He's just thrown up his hands, and he believes there's no future for him with Viola. They are estranged. He believes there's nothing for him. And so he and Brooke both leave the ball, preparing to leave the ring. Raffia meets Lena, and his desire for her is unmistakable, as he goes so far as to say. Do they know each other previously? What can they get from each other? Lena seems to be someone who is self-serving, to put it kindly, and we know Raffia wishes to wield ultimate power in the ring. They might be well suited. And then the climax of this compelling, gripping episode when the fawn witch, no longer fawn, all witch, in all her terrible glory, enters the proceedings with a mind to curse Raffia as revenge for what his aunt did to her, hexing her, turning her into a fawn. Magnolia sees what is happening and goes to the witch, trying to block the curse. We think she's going to take it on herself, but instead... The curse goes wild up into the heavens, raining down on all at the ball, rendering them all frozen in time. 
outside the ballroom and the outskirts is a human, Dodd Hoskins, the bad penny who came back. He's witnessed it all, and the fay are frozen, unable to move should Dodd Hoskins wish to prove the existence of the fay with evidence of these fay now frozen in time. What an episode! Our sponsor this week is Love Among the Brambles. They have recognized our show, Bramble On, as significantly adding to the success, the illumination, the appreciation of their product. And as sponsors, they are offering their product, Season 1768, as a book, printed here in Dim Q, available from your local penitentiary or via the website run by Amazonians. So get your printed copy of Season 1768 now from the Amazonian site. Or if you are a Patreon, patron of the Academy of Omnisophical Arts and Sciences, you may procure one complementarily depending on your pledge level. Unsurprisingly, the rating for this episode was five full mushrooms and a flower unheard of. Five mushrooms are the limit. However, the fans have spoken, and there we have it. Today, in honor of this auspicious episode and the season, I will take five callers. I will not respond between each one. We would be on for the next two plulum until the next season. So call us what have you to say. I will wrap up after all your calls. Caller number one. I was literally shouting at the hologram when Viola went to the ball looking for Stalk and couldn't find him. I kept saying, he's over there. He's over there. I can't believe she missed him. And now he may be gone for good, but he can't be. He's the only one who can save the ring, aside from Brooke, but sorry, he doesn't really count. Anyway, what the ring needs right now is a hero, and who better than Stalk? Maybe Viola will finally see him for how wonderful he really is. Thank you, caller number one. Moving on, what say you, caller number two? Well, hello, hello, hello. Is, I'm hoping someone is there. Anyway, this is Eliza Lockwood, and I just, I, I just can't believe it. Raffia is after Lena. When Lena had been asking about Raffia. Oh, sounds like a match made in Tohubohu. Well, guess we'll find out next season, unless the writers pull a fast one and leave everyone frozen all season. I wouldn't put it past them. I need to find another show to obsess over, just in case. Toodaloo. Hope you have a wonderful day, wherever you may be, in whatever dimension. <sighs> Eliza Lockwood just had to call. Thank you, caller number two. Yes. As for other shows, well, nothing compares to Love Among the Brambles. There was once a show in Dim Q. I may have mentioned it in passing. It's known as The Great Betrayal, formerly known as Game of Thrones. In its heyday, that show was on par with Love Among the Brambles. But whereas LATB has been, by and large, consistently good, certainly viewable, for 1,769 seasons, The Great Betrayal, G-O-T, lasted six seasons without major incident, although it was starting to become undone. By season seven, the warts were all on display and it utterly fell apart in season eight and broke many hearts, resulting in petitions and in some realms, riots. Enough said about that. Moving on, caller number three. <sighs> Watching Slate walk in with Dahlia and Lena on each arm, I know he's smiling and the women look gorgeous, but I saw sorrow behind that smile. He's not the carefree rascal we've known for centuries and love. It seems like his spirit's broken. I feel sorry for him. Yes, Slate is not himself. There's nothing. Where's the twinkle in his eye? Where's the spring in his step? That, that mischievous smile. All gone. He's a broken fae. 
I may be the only one, but I like seeing old pal Citron and Magnolia back together. For all her faults, Magnolia does truly care about Citron. And I thought it was really sweet that when that elf boy Ephraim snuck into the ball, not only did Magnolia not turn him in, she encouraged Citron to go to him. Maybe Magnolia really is growing up. I dare not speculate too far out on Magnolia, but at the rate things are going, she is redeeming herself. That doesn't mean not to expect a mighty plot twist in seasons to come. Can I just say I am in shock? Utter shock. Seriously. The Fawn Witch? Did you see the look on Rafia's face when she went to curse him? I mean, if it hadn't been for Magnolia interfering at the last second, Rafia would have been blasted, and everyone else would be safe. But now, everyone's under the curse, and they're all frozen. They really can't stay that way forever, can they? It's going to be a long wait until next season, I can tell you that. I'm not sure I can wait. Thanks. Bye. I think there we have it. I could not say it better myself. What a fantastic summing up and, and speculation on what may come, what may not come. Either way, callers, you have given us plenty to think about. I will say, in addition to the shock over the, the curse and the entire Fey ring being frozen, I am indeed very, very worried about Dodd Hoskins having the evidence he needs to expose the Fae. But we will just have to wait, as will all, until next season, season number 1770. Until then, we look forward to this season, number 1769, having its book come out, which should happen next Plulum, right in between now and the next season. Until then, my friends, as best as you can, keep calm and bramble on.